Hey everyone, it's Asa, and welcome to my video on common data mistakes. We don't have augment stats anymore, but it is still pretty good to look at data for units and items. However, there, I frequently get told someone says, you know, oh, X is the best item on this unit in the stats, and it's very frequently wrong, so I'm gonna go ahead and talk about some uh, things to watch out for when using stats. Uh, first of all, Survivorship bias. Um, if you do average placement, almost all the five costs are going to be at the top. Basically, this just means if you made it to getting five costs, um, it's heavily weighted towards people who survived to the end of the game. Uh, I think this is pretty straightforward, uh, but it also applies for items. So if we sort by items, you can actually see that the items that aren't built as often that have lower play rates, such as Guardbreaker, Adaptive Helm, uh, Val, um, which are built, you know, like Guardbreaker is built less than four times as often as Shoujin. These tend to have the best average placements because when they show up on someone's endgame board, which is where this data is taken, it frequently is because someone took a Guardbreaker off of like a Sage 6 carousel. Uh, so when you look at item stats on individual units, this effect is very, very much still present. Um, so let's just go ahead and look at Timer Dinner, for example. And let's just look at, for example, I'll see a lot of people will say, oh, uh, Guardbreaker. I mean, let's use the same thing. It's only a 5% play rate, but it has a much better average placement than Archangels, for example. Uh, Guardbreaker is definitely not a bad item on Timer Dinner, but it's typically not going to be as good as Archangel or Jewel Gauntlet despite the average placement because of that play rate effect. A lot of the times, the data from when someone has a guard breaker on their Heimer Deer is when they've already moved their items that they've crafted to maybe Malzahar with the removers, and then they got a guard breaker on the late game carousel and put on Heimer Deer. So of course, the average placement appears to be better. Um, one way you can think about with play rate, uh, to do some like math here is, uh, so the average placement for Heimer Deer is 4.32. Um, so if we say it has, let's just say it has Archangels, uh, 39.1% of the time, and it places 4.21 on average, that means that, look, let's not do the 1%, so that means that 61% of the time, which is of course just 100 minus 39, 61% of the time, you don't have Archangels. Um, and these two added together will give you the average placement, right? So let's just uh, really quickly do this. 0.39 times 4.21. Subtract this from the average placement. Whoops. Wait, what is going on here? I want to multiply by negative one, I guess I have to like click it. Okay, there we go. Um, and then divide by this. Okay, this is giving me some trouble. Okay, basically, let's try again. 0.39 times 4.21 um, minus 4.32. I had trouble making this negative, so I'm just not gonna negate it. Let's just divide by 0.61. So basically, it means that this x here, solve for x, is 4.39. Um, so that means if you don't have Archangels, your average is 4.39. So you can see that Archangels is actually a very good item on Heimer. If you don't have it, uh, it's fairly impactful. Again, a lot of the average placement differences are... This is a difference of about 0.07, which is like... Not a ton, but a lot of the average placement differences between these items are about that much to begin with. Uh, and if you do the same analysis for Guardbreaker, you'll see that, uh, let's just go ahead and do it, 5% times 4.01, and then 95% of the time, you don't have Guardbreaker. So 0.05 times 4.01. Again, I'm not gonna negate it, so it'll show as a negative number, but you can just flip it around, right? So 4.33. So with Guardbreaker, so this is Guardbreaker. 
And this is uh, Archangel. So with Guardbreaker, if you don't have Guardbreaker, then your average is 4.33, right? So it's like, it doesn't really matter if you have it or not. Uh, not having Guardbreaker is not having a big deal, but not having Archangels, which is, I would, I would say, high range best and slot item because he is a scaling champion um, that every time he casts his ultimate, uh, he gains more, more rockets every single time. So Archangel synergizes really well with that. It scales into the fight with Heimer. His later casts are a lot more impactful, and then it gives him a lot more AP. Heimer is also Visionary Academy, so he doesn't have natural AP built in that other units, such as like Soko, for example, like Dominator. Uh, so AP is an extremely valuable stat to build on Heimer Deer. Um, so you can see like Archangel is, I think, clearly his best in slot. Uh, so even though the average placement looks significantly worse than Guardbreaker, you have to factor in the play rate uh, as well. And basically, the play rate for this, again, if you look at just overall items and look at the best items, they're just the low play rate items that people are frequently getting from late game carousels. So just be very careful when you're looking at data and saying like, oh, XYZ is the best in the stats, uh, because play rate is very relevant. 80%, 50%, 30%, 10%, these are all very, very different. Um, if we look at individual item stats, let's just look at Shojin and let's look at like average placement. All of the ones that are at the top are going to be the legendaries because again, it's going to be heavily weighted towards if you survive long enough to make it to legendaries, then your average placement is just going to be better. So it doesn't necessarily mean that like Shojin Rumble is very good. It just means, you know, if you made it to the end game board and you put a Shojin on your Rumble, chances are you already had your main carries itemized um, and there's like a leftover item. So your average placement is going to be really good. I like to look at relative delta, which uh, basically means how kind of what I was doing with Heimer Deer, how much this unit having this item versus this unit not having the item is worth. So I think relative delta, there's definitely still some issues with looking at data with this at the end. At the end of the day, you always have to use your own, um, your own brain to kind of like figure things out. But relative delta kind of gives you a better sense of the best users of Shojin. And it makes sense like Jinx, Malzahar, these units really want to cast. They have high mana pools, Powder, same thing. Uh, Savika, I would say, is kind of an outlier, but you can see the play rate is extremely low, 0.1%. So I would just ignore these. And then Soko makes a lot of sense, right? Because uh, compared to Heimerdinger, who doesn't have an AP uh, synergy, but he has a mana synergy, Soko has Dominator. So Dominator gives him a lot of AP, as long as he can cast often. So... I mean, this just makes a lot of sense, right? Like, items that help Soko cast more give him more AP, whereas Heimer Deer wants uh, Archangels, which gives him a lot of AP. And then, same thing with, like, Zoe, for example. Rebel will give her... Rebel gives her AP and attack speed, so Sh Shoujin synergizes really well on Zoe compared to other mana items, I guess, like, such adaptive or attack speed items. Uh, Shoujin's going to be really good on her. Um, yeah, so... I guess just in conclusion, I think anytime you're you look at something and you're like, oh, uh, this item is better than this item because it has like a better average placement or a better delta, just be very careful of doing that. Always factor in play rate and uh, uh, other. There's a lot of other factors as well. For example, Giant Slayer, I would say it's typically like if you popped a component anvil and you got offered both of these on Heimer, generally Rabidons is going to be a lot better. However, it's built out of two rods, which is your anti-heal and your anti-magic resist with Spark and Morello. So building Rabadons typically can hinder your overall entire item economy. Whereas Giant Slayer uses Sword, which is a really bad component in AP comps, and Bow, which is a pretty mediocre component in AP comps. So there's always going to be factors like this. Uh, so again, once again, if you popped a component anvil and got offered both of these for Heimer, I would take Rabadons. Um, but you just have to be careful just looking at just looking at the average placement. Someone might think, okay, Giant Slayer has a better average placement and a higher play rate, so it's better. So just be careful with that. That's going to wrap it up for this video on data. Let me know in the Discord if you have any questions or comments. Thanks for watching.